Hey, how's it going? Cam's Campbell here. Welcome to my new channel, Booktube. Yay! <laughs> I've just been watching some Booktube newbie tag videos. I didn't know that was a thing until last night, and it came up in my feed, and I was like, ah, a newbie tag. I should do that. So, here I'm doing a newbie tag video. So, why did you start this channel? How long have you got? <laughs> this could get long. I, I mean, I do like to talk on camera. I haven't scripted anything, so it's going to be off the cuff. I started the channel primarily because I love books. I mean, isn't that why we all start YouTube channels or booktube channels? I love books, always have, and I'm sure I'll get to some of the other questions where I can discuss that more. So I won't go into too much here in the introduction. I would like to meet other people. One of the things that's surprised me the most is how good the community is, how supportive it is. And I don't really have all that many people I can chat to books, chat to books with, chat about, chat with, about books. Uh, so why not do it here? That's kind of the primary purpose. And the secondary purpose is because I want to read more deeply. I have been reading for years and years and years. I'm 52, in case you're wondering. Started reading since I can remember. So I've read a lot of books, and one of my favourite things has always been to talk about books. So, I mean, this isn't a great introduction, is it? I'm repeating myself already. The secondary purpose is to, to read more deeply. Of all the books I've read, like for example, this one that's sitting on my desk right now, which I finished last night for the third time. And could I remember the ending? No, I couldn't. I read this first time in 1999, 2000, thereabouts. Again in 2014, and then finished it again last night. So kind of 10 years between and I don't remember them so that's a memory thing but it's also I think partly a depth thing and what I've noticed of late my reading method tends to be audiobooks and I will listen to them at 2x when I'm out hiking walking the dog doing chores driving you know the usual and I think that listen to fantasy books particularly at 2x not the best way of retaining them, so I want to read more deeply, and not just fiction, also non-fiction. I'm reading a lot of non-fiction. This is one that's on the go right now, biography of Lenin, and I want to retain the information. Like, for example, I was reading that bit and I looked up a, a map of pre-revolutionary Russia and was surprised to see that Finland was part of it, and then I was going through my On This Day in my journal, and this time last year I was reading a book by Orlando Figus, Russian Revolutionary Russia, 1891 to 1991. And in my journal entry I'd written, how did I not know Finland was part of pre-revolutionary Russia? Like, I mean, I'm a student of Russia. I've got a degree in Russian language and literature. Did lots of history at uni. And so that information just left my head somehow. It definitely won't leave my head now because I've talked about it on camera. So you get the idea. If I'm reading more deeply, coming on here and talking about it, then I will retain the information that I'm reading much better. At least that's the idea. So that's why I'm starting the channel. What are some fun and unique things you can bring to YouTube? Fun. Well... I was going to put a backdrop of other booktubers on my other monitor there and discovered that in so doing, the camera focuses on that face and not this face. So, it was you, Henke. Let's get that out of the way. Fun though, yeah, how about something like that? That's kind of the opposite of fun, isn't it? I do like to read about Soviet history, so yeah, not exactly fun, but 
Unique, right. What can I bring that's unique? Well, maybe age, experience. You might have noticed I'm not a young whippersnapper. I'm not going to talk about age too much here because I don't like people that do that either. But, you know, I've read a lot. I'm reasonably well educated and I read a diverse, eclectic mix of books, which I'm sure I'll get to as we go down this list of questions. I think the biggest unique factor, I think, would be my recovery from alcoholism and medication. So I stopped drinking in 2005. I haven't picked up a drink since then. And that's been a journey. (laughs) And also... Uh, prescription medication that's been part of my life which is really what brought me to YouTube in the first place you know back in around about 2000 2000 A cams that's quite a feat no 2020 all right okay back to the feature film I pivoted my already existing channel into this uh, recovery from addiction and alcoholism and I actually did ponder the idea of putting my book reviews on that channel because they are tangentially linked to recovery and you know sometimes less tangentially sometimes more so but I decided no it would be a bit too confusing for my audience so booktube it is a new channel but I can bring that wisdom I would call it I think yeah I bring that wisdom to bear on Everything I do and read, for example, a series I've just finished, not a series, a book I've just finished. I've read the series before. I've read this trilogy twice, and this is my third time. And this book is actually responsible for my overall philosophy on art, on human connection, on recovery, on spirituality. And that whole worldview was formulated the first time I read this series back around 1999-2000 when I was still very much in active alcoholism. Which is kind of bizarre in a way because the philosophy I use in my recovery was formulated while drinking and reading fantasy books. I think that's kind of a unique thing. But that's what I'm going to bring to bear. I mean, I know a lot of channels talk about fantasy series. That's my preferred genre. If I had to rank them, that would be at the top. But I haven't seen many people discuss them on YouTube from a recovery angle, from a spirituality angle, from a... Well, maybe morality. There's definitely some of that on YouTube. But from a recovery point of view... I think the magic system in this particularly is is very, very much tied into the cosmos, spirituality, however you want to put it. So I think that's the unique thing I'm going to bring to it. And I will be talking about this book at length quite soon before I start reading the second one because I want to go a bit deeper into it and analyse the the stuff that I came up with back then and how it's evolved over time. And then, as I go through the rest of the books, you know, I'll see how that develops now that I'm being more purposeful about it. So there we go. That's my unique take on what I'm going to bring to my booktube channel. Recovery from alcoholism. What are you most excited about for this channel? Just one thing, it's probably reading more deeply. As I mentioned in my introduction, I want to read more deeply for retention's sake, for education's sake. If I had to bring another thing in, it's going to be human connection. Definitely need more of that in my life. Where I get to meet with other creators and to, to become part of the community. That's what I'm really excited for. So, two things. Hope that's all right. Why do you love reading? Gosh. That's another how long have you got question. Escapism. If I had to put it into a single word. 
it would be escape. If I had to put in another word, it would be connection. Connecting to other people, to other people's art. So it's not just reading, there's music, there's art, there's movies and TV shows. Creation. I believe that the creative act is one of the most pure ways of connecting to source, whatever you choose to call it. Higher power, God, the universe, source. That's what brings me into making videos. That's what brings me into writing. It's a process of self-improvement. And when I was coming up with my philosophy of art, which came around, as I was finishing this trilogy, I came to understand that connecting to other people through what they create is a very powerful thing. It's a very restorative thing. It's a very therapeutic thing. And when I think back to my earliest memories, a lot of them have books in them, or book-related things, trips to the library with my mum. On a Wednesday when it was late closing, I think it was open till 7.30 on a Wednesday night, or going there after school, or travelling with a book and remembering when I picked that book up, where I was, when I read it. School, one of my most enduring memories of school is reading. I didn't have a good time at school, didn't enjoy it, didn't do well, but I did read a lot, you know. And we'll get to that when it talks about when did you start reading and the next question. Right, what's next? What book or series got you into reading? <laughs> I was actually thinking of going into the loft to get a book down to answer this one, but I didn't. So what I would have brought down from the loft would have been The Enchanted Wood by Enid Blyton. One of my earliest book purchasing memories was of buying that from Jimmy Young's newsagent in Presswick for 50 pence, along with another Enid Blyton title called The Wishing Chair. And those two books I have memories of reading multiple times and their sequels as well and being absolutely blown away by them. That was probably the beginning of my love of fantasy. Possibly. If not that, then this one, which... I read in primary six The Book of Three by Lloyd Alexander, the first of the Chronicles of Prydain. Primary six would have made me, what, nine or ten? Mrs. Welsh's class. And I remember being absolutely mesmerised by this book. It's based on Welsh mythology. And it's one of five in the series. And I remember doing artwork in class, drawing the Horned King. That's that skull up there. The Horned King was the baddie. Taran was the main protagonist. He worked on a farm called Caer Dolben, along with Call and Dolben, and then he met this little monkey creature called Gurgi, who I remember used to say funny things like munchings and crunchings. Apart from those, uh, The Wizard of Oz, I remember reading The Wizard of Oz and imagining myself being on a quest. It was possibly the second in the series, the one that's got pumpkin head in it. And I remember it made me want to eat slices of rough cut bread and chunks of cheese. <laughs> so even to this day when I eat 
rough cut bread, which I've just bought a loaf this afternoon. I'm just back from the co-op and I've got a nice farmhouse loaf and I cut a rough end off and I can just imagine myself having that with a nice thick chunk of cheese, you know. So, yeah, those are the ones. If I was going to think about fantasy books as I got older, the Shannara series, Lord of the Rings, the David Eddings series called The Bilgariad, which then led to many more David Eddings books. So I read all of them uh, late, mid to late teens. I read The Hobbit twice as a younger teenager and I remember playing the Spectrum adventure game on the Sinclair ZX Spectrum, which was a rubber keyed home computer in the UK. I don't know if you got them in the US. And the adventure game was one where you would type in the instructions and it would load up images line by line. It would take forever. And then you would type go west, east, north, south, pick up key, kill Gandalf. That was always one that would get you killed. Kill Thorin, you know, you had to type the commands in. So yeah, fantasy was big. Oh, there was another series which I absolutely must mention that got me into reading, which is the Alfred Hitchcock and the Three Investigators, which I believe were written by multiple authors. That would have been primary six as well, so age nine or ten. And me and my two pals, we used to read them all, get them out of Presswick Library. And uh, it was basically three kids, Jupiter Jones, Pete Crenshaw and Bob Andrews. God, still in my head. And they would solve crimes, basically. They got together as a, a little group called the Three Investigators. And the Alfred Hitchcock connection was that he was always a character in the books that they would somehow, they would sometimes approach and ask for advice or help. Uh, they met in a junkyard somewhere in America. I can't remember where exactly. It probably wouldn't have meant much to me at the time if I had known that, which is probably why I don't remember. I do remember the junkyard though, and that they had secret ways in and out. Well, they'd have like little entrances where you could lift a certain car door or something and find a way into their, their den. So me and two pals, we became the three investigators one summer and we had a, a den in my garden shed and we would meet and, I mean, we didn't solve any crimes or anything. What did we do? We probably drank juice and ate biscuits. But I do remember making little business cards with their names on them. Uh, I was Jupiter Jones. My pal Gary was Pete Crenshaw. And my other pal, Youngie, he was Bob Andrews. So, yeah, that's that's a nice memory. So I absolutely have to mention that series as being responsible for my love of reading. Another series would have been Wilbur Smith. So it does ask you later on, when did you start reading? So we'll just carry on with that question, just as if it were the same question, because they're all connected. Used to deliver papers as a youth. Used to sit on my BMX bike with a paper bag across my shoulder, cycle around Presswick at half six in the morning. Down Presswick Beach with the wind howling. And I would either listen to the charts the top 40, which I would have taped off the radio on Sunday night from Radio 1, or books on tape out Presswick Library. My dad used to do the same, and I remember he had out a book called The Eye of the Tiger by Wilbur Smith, and I think that was really the beginning of my love of audiobooks. So we'd be talking, what, 1986, 85, 86, delivering papers listening to The Eye of the Tiger and just being mesmerised by it. And ever since then, I've been an audiobook listener. It's just something I love to do. So, yeah, that was 
Uh, what was the question? When did you start reading? That's when I started reading audio books. When did I start reading? In general, well, you know, my earliest memories are of reading. I mentioned already visiting the library with my mum on a Wednesday night. Used to get out the maximum number of books. Reading in school, I just mentioned the book of three. Uh, high school, reading The Silver Sword by Ian Sorelia, The Outsiders. Uh, what else would I have read in high school? The Dark is Rising and the follow-ups to that by Susan someone. Susan Cooper, was it? One was called Oversea Under Stone. Dark is Rising. I can't remember what the other ones were in the series. So, yeah, I remember fondly sitting in English class when the teacher wanted a scythe and they would say, right, you're going to read for the double period. So you would just get a book off the shelf and the teacher would scythe and we would sit and read quietly as the rain pelted outside and we were inside cosy and warm going through adolescence and all of that. Memories, you know, so many memories of reading books. So that really covers two questions. What book or series got you into reading? The Enchanted Wood, we'll go with that. And when did you start reading? As soon as I could, basically, is the answer to that. What questions would you ask your favourite booktubers? Hmm... I'm not sure. Maybe something like, what got you into this? What made you pick up the camera and start talking about books? That would be an interesting question because I'm sure everyone's answers would be different. And another one might be, what book did you almost not finish and then go on to finish and you ended up rating it five stars? I've had that happen before. The ones that spring to mind are Les Miserables, Victor Hugo. Almost didn't finish it. And then did, and then was like, oh my God, that's so good. Uh, what else? The first of the Gormenghas books. Uh, Titus Grown. Is it Titus Grown, the first one? I think it is. It was... A struggle for me the first time I picked it up and it's now one of my favourite books it's a definite five star book and I've read all of them multiple times I absolutely love them uh, there was one other that came to mind The Time Traveller's Wife although I didn't end up rating that five stars but I am glad I finished it uh, and more recently let me grab this off the shelf This one here, Kim Stanley Robinson, The Years of Rice and Salt. So this was recommended in a newsletter I read by Clementine Morrigan. Uh, she and her partner, Jay Salil, Salil, they both recommended this highly and I got it off a used bookstore and there was a point I was like, I mm, don't know, it's quite a difficult read. Not difficult, challenging. Yeah, that's a better word. It's a challenging read about, it's like speculative fiction. If you imagine that the Black Death basically killed Europe, everyone in Europe, and how the world would develop. But it's, it's chunks. Each chapter is a different book, basically. And the characters are reincarnated in each story and the story spans multiple multiple centuries even certainly multiple decades and I struggled with it and then I got to the end I'm glad I persevered with it because it was it's turned out to be a five star and it's going to be talked about when I get to my reads of 2023 video which I understand is my duty to create as a booktuber so look out for that coming soon so that's a question for 
any booktuber out there. What book did you almost not finish and then go on to rate it five stars? Right, what's next? What challenges do you think starting a YouTube channel will be the hardest to overcome? It's probably... If I go back to my days at uni, I studied Russian literature at St Andrews and I would be given essay questions. And I was never very good at it. My essay writing was poor. I mean, I always got a pass mark. I never failed, so I suppose in a sense it wasn't that poor, but there was only one essay where I actually scored a high mark, and that's from the book Oblomov by Ivan Goncharov, which I will be talking about in my 2023 review. Other than that, my essays were poor, and when I watch other booktubers coming up with really clever analyses, thought-provoking ideas, there's that old imposter syndrome kicking in. It's like, who needs to hear my hot take on this? You know what I mean? How can I add anything new into booktube? Is it too late? Is the booktuber market on YouTube already saturated and I'm trying to get in too late to a genre that has no more room, you know? And I know that that's not the truth, so I take that fact and I act anyway. But yeah, it's the idea of making content that I think other people will enjoy because ultimately that's why we do it on YouTube, I think. Otherwise, why bother, you know? But I am, as I said before, looking forward to going deeper into what I'm reading and this process here will enable that to happen. So it's a hard thing to overcome, but I think I will. I'll get there. Where do you read? Well, wherever, really. If I'm at home, I like to sit here sometimes if I'm reading non-fiction particularly because I love my desk. It's good lighting here. And I can put all my highlighters and pens and rulers and stationery tabs and everything here. So I like to read here. In the summer, I like to sit on the sofa just there with the, the daylight coming in the window. I love the look of daylight on paper with sharp text and the smell of a book. It's not a very comfortable sofa though, so you know, you make do. One day I'd love to have a little nook, like I see some YouTubers have, with a comfy chair and a good lamp. When I was younger, I used to like going out on my bike or just walking and finding a secret spot where I could read in peace, uninterrupted. You know, I used to cycle down to Presswick Beach down to the the sewerage works of all places, which is called Dummigan's Castle, colloquially. And you could sit round the back of that with a book and lean against the wall and have the sun coming down on you, and that was a nice little spot. Cycling to Killeen, or the Electric Bray, I mean, these won't mean anything to most of you. Just areas around Ayrshire, west coast Scotland. I used to cycle a lot take a book with me and even now to this day one of my favourite things is to sit by a river or somewhere out of the way but where I live now we can't really do that in the summer because midges and clegs we've got biting insects that just make that not really workable so I'll go hiking so the bugs don't bother you and you're walking and I'll have airpods in and I'll be listening to books so that's what I do here but yeah, I love reading outside, I think, more than anything, with some good sunlight coming down. Can he beat it? So yeah, I'll read wherever, but light and comfort are important. And tea. Tea's important too. And the last one, what kind of books do you like to read? Well, you're not going to be surprised to hear if you've watched the video this far. But my favourite genre is fantasy. Has been since, what, primary six? 
even younger when I bought the Enchanted Wood at whatever age that was. I can't remember. Series of fantasy books, I'm going to go with Stephen R. Donaldson, The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant. These are my favourite series of fantasy books ever. That's the first Chronicles and the second Chronicles. There's also a last Chronicles, so there's a trilogy, a trilogy, and then whatever four books are called. Quadrilogy, Tetralogy, uh, Quartet, I don't know. Uh, so that's that. Sci-fi, I do enjoy a good sci-fi book, although not as much. I loved The Expanse. I loved sci-fi series written by this author called The Gap series which I used to have in paperback and don't know where they are loads of books I've lost over the years probably house moves, charity shops that kind of thing kind of regret that actually but what are you going to do classic literature you know back to my time at uni particularly Russian literature 19th century Russian literature uh, but I also enjoy English literature and American I love John Steinbeck for example Grapes of Wrath is one of my top 10 for sure Crime I do like a good crime novel uh, Joe Nesbo is one that comes to mind Stieg Larsson really enjoyed the Dragon Tattoo books so that's all Scandi drama isn't it uh, UK stuff uh, Ian Rankin I really like Ian Rankin stuff the, the Rebus books uh, so yeah crime fiction speculative fiction so I've already showed you this one which I guess is speculative fiction maybe historical fiction maybe sci-fi I would probably say it's speculative fiction uh, Stephen King I love Stephen King, although that's probably more horror, maybe fantasy. Clive Barker, I like some of his stuff. Books of Blood. Uh, that's me at the end of my newbie booktube tag video. It's probably quite long. I don't know how many sections I've done here, but yeah, if you've got this far, thank you. Thanks for sticking with me. I'm excited to be here. Super excited. And I hope that uh, I get to make friends here. That's kind of one of the goals. I'm going to be joining my first BookTuber book club live call tonight in about three hours' time. So I'm excited for that. Uh, I'm excited to be on some Discords, uh, Mike's Book Reviews. That's a very busy Discord. So I'm enjoying that and being participant, looking at the read-alongs, that kind of thing. I'm keen to read more literature, uh, particularly Dickens. So following along with the uh, Books and Things channel, that's quite helpful. I have bought a couple of Dickens. I read my first Dickens last year, Great Expectations, and I've since bought my own copy because I got it out of the library, and I've got another one there to read, which I forget what I bought. It's on the shelf, I'll show you someday. Uh, I've got a whole load of Russian history books to read, particularly about Stalinism. So right now I'm about halfway through Lenin's biography. I read a lot about Russian history. I'm really fascinated by it. Like one of my top ten books is by Svetlana Alexievich. And it's called something about time. Let me just go and grab it. Secondhand time. This is a fantastic book which I read on Kindle. And then, you know, as I said, I like to have an actual book. So I bought it again because I'm definitely going to be dipping in and out of this. There's oral histories from different people different ages, different experiences of the wall coming down in Russia and what life used to be like, what it's like now, how it's changed. It's just fascinating. So yeah, lots and lots of 
Russia books to read through and so yeah look out for some of that content coming over the years it's not, it's not something I'm going to get to quickly but certainly the Lenin book I'll be talking about quite soon because it's out of the library so I've got until what 24th of February to finish that one so yeah right I'll leave it there thanks for watching this and I look forward to spending more time on here talking about books if you like the kind of stuff I've talked about you know what to do I don't need to tell you right and I'll be subscribing to lots of channels over the next few weeks as I find my way around on booktube learn about who I like and what kind of stuff vibes with me so look out for some comments and stuff like that yeah that's me see you soon bye